Hey guys, one clue here. I hope all of you are doing really well and having a really great day. In the last video, I talked about what Mysterium is and how you can protect yourself and create a little bit more privacy for yourself while browsing the web or using whatever you're doing on the web. In today's video, I want to show you how you can set up a Mysterium node on your own and also I want to talk a little bit about risks or things that I did to secure myself a little bit more. So let's get started. As you can see, we are currently on the Mysterium website. It's called mistnotes.com and I'm currently logged in. If you do not have an account over there, uh, go over there and uh, create an account because this is what you need to create yourself a node. Uh, the first thing you see when you land on this page is a earnings overview so uh, that you get an overview of what you could expect but uh, in my opinion this is far above of what you really earn per month. Um, my estimates are around 20 to 30 Mysterium token per month but this also depends on a lot of things. Uh, for example, your node will be tracked on how good the latency to your node is, your node or your basically the computer where you try to install the software. You also will be tracked on how good your bandwidth is. So basically this node will do from time to time a speed test and also the uptime and the current version that you're using. Um, but as far as I know, and I have installed my Mysterium node in my home lab on my server, um, there's an automatic update on this, so I don't really need to bother anything. It's running in the background and I do not bother about anything. And today's video is not really technical. Today's video is more about like how you could do this. I also want to create a node with you, but it's really simple and there's nothing you should be worried about. So what we can do is we can click on the tab of onboarding and as you can see we have multiple solutions that you could choose. The first thing would be to run this on your desktop. I myself would not recommend this due to the fact that I don't want to run my PC all the time and I'm not... I, I shut my PC down every day so I'm not doing this. Um, if you have your PC running 24-7 and there are some important tasks on it or whatever, go for it if you want, but to be honest, that's nothing I want to do because um, in my network I set up a couple of rules that is restricting the network. Nevertheless, you could choose this, um, so they have software for Windows, Mac or Linux, you could easily do this. If you choose to do this on Linux, it's basically the same. Uh, as if you would choose to deploy this on a data center or a Raspberry Pi. Um, but just to say, you could also do this on Windows or Mac OS. What we will today take a look on is data center. You could also do this on a Raspberry Pi. If you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it's pretty simple. It's just like a mini computer that you can deploy software, whatever, uh, whatever software you would like on it. It's an amazing PC, it's a lot of thing. It has a gigabit ethernet port and there's there's plenty of resources on it to host something like a mystery node. So if you have a Raspberry Pi laying around and you don't know what to do with it, maybe you wanna choose to run a mystery node on this just to earn a couple of bucks per month extra. And basically, I need to say this, I love the idea about Mysterium due to the fact that I can share my bandwidth and my residential IP with people that are restricted in some sort. And sure, we also need to talk about the fact that there might be a potential risk for yourself that if somebody else is using your IP address and they are doing shady stuff, it could be, and I'm not sure about the regulations in your country you're in, but in my country, I can tell that if somebody else is connecting to this node and is doing illegal stuff over my IP address, I cannot be sued for this due to the fact that I have never permitted him to do this. I'm only giving the people the option to connect to my IP address, whatever they do, and if they download shady stuff over this connection, that's their own fault, that's not my fault. So that's pretty nice to me. It's a little bit more complicated, but I think this explains it very, very enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on data center. And as you see, that's everything you need to know. Basically, what we need to do is we need to copy all those commands, one after the other, 
then we can open uh, then we can start the service and after this we can open the website it's basically the dashboard or your user interface that you can use to manage your own node okay so let's get started with this um, I'm switching over to my VPS service provider. This is Linode and if you don't know what Linode is, it's basically a cloud provider for VPS, so virtual private servers in the cloud. If you use my link in the video description, you get a $100 bonus for the next 60 days so that you can use this platform for the first 60 days for free. Afterwards, you only pay for what you use. So if you want to choose this, but then nevertheless, I choose an Ubuntu 22 version. I set the region that I want to use this on. I choose the smallest plan. It's, a, it's called a Nanode, Nanode one gigabyte. This will cost only five bucks per month. And I will give this a video, a, a label, I mean, Mystery video. And I will choose a strong password for this as well. This is the password that you need to remember. So choose a strong password because this is the password you're gonna need to log into your server. So let's create this Linode. And as always, I will skip the part of provisioning and booting up. So see you in a second. Okay, I'm back here. The Linode booted up, it installed Ubuntu and now we can click on Launch Leash Console. And by the way, I totally recommend using Linode if you wanna test or try out things and you're not sure if you should do this in your own home lab. Um, then just try out Linode, it's pretty easy. If I delete this Linode, after one hour, I only will get charged for less than a cent due to the fact that the per month cost is $5 and if you divide this down to a hour basis, it's, it's less than a cent that you need to pay for this. So let's click on Launch Leash Console. There we go. As our login name, we choose root and the password that you have chosen. Let's go over back to the onboarding process. Now we need to copy a couple of commands. We copy the first one, we paste it in, and press enter afterwards. Let it do its thing. Now it's uh, just importing and downloading all the updates that it needs from Mysterium. And we can also copy the next command. So the first command is done. Now we're doing an update to the server so that it is pulling all the latest uh, packages that it needs. And now we can install Mysterium. So just paste it in, press on OK, press on yes, I accept the terms and conditions. And now it's installing. As I mentioned in the last video, to do this, you need a Mysterium account and you also need a Mysterium wallet. I use MetaMask for this and the Polygon chain and uh, it's pretty simple. Just connect your wallet to this and you're good to go. So what I have done now is I uh, simply checked what currently is going on on the service. I uh, copied this command and pasted it in. Now it's telling me, hey, okay, everything is running, it's active. I can press Control C to get out of it. And now you're done. What we can do now is we need to uh, remember that we need the port 449. Now we need the IP address and it should bring us to our new node. So now we can click on Start Node Setup. You choose a strong password again. I agree on the terms and conditions. Uh, if we hover over here, uh, we now can connect our node to our missed nodes account. To do this, what you need to do is we need to go back over to missnodes.com slash me and connect our node to it. What we can do is I click on my account and now we see a lot of things here. The only thing we need is this API key. We just simply copy it, then we go over back to the dashboard and we paste it in. And now we can click on set password. Okay, it seems like the password does not match. Let's uh, do this again. Ah, your password needs to be at, le at least 10 characters. Okay, let's choose a not so strong password. Um, and we are good to go. Now is an important thing. To use your Mysterium node or to connect it to the Mysterium network, you need to pay a small fee. It's basically just like that. You need to uh, deposit a small fee. In this example, uh, 0.13 MIS token or one USD. 
you can either choose to pay this with PayPal or credit card, or you can directly deposit the uh, 0.13 Mysterium token. I click on this. Now it's telling me, okay, transfer the Mysterium token over to this wallet. And it's checking constantly if this payment has been proceeded and if this payment has been gone through. If so, it will activate my node. And all the steps I've shown you today are basically the same as if you would do this in your home lab. There's only one difference. You need to open ports on your home lab and you need to have a static IP address at home. You don't really need to have a static IP address like the one you have to pay like a thousand or hundreds and multiple of bucks for this. What you need is an IP address that is not in a CG NAT system. I don't want to go too deep into detail, but what you should check out if you want to host this node on your local network, you should see the information of your ISP if you are using a CG NAT network to get your IP address. Your router at home gets an IP address. This is the address it will use to communicate with the internet. It's really complicated. The only thing I want to I want to say about this is that you need to check if you have a static IP address or at least that you're not behind a CG net network. If so, you're good to go. The only thing you need to now, uh, the only thing that you need to do then is to go into your router. And unfortunately, I cannot show you the process due to the fact that everybody has a different router and every router is different. There are common routers around uh, from Telecom, from uh, Fritzbox, and a couple other ones. I myself use a OpenSense and all of them are different. Maybe you have a different ISP that I don't even know and they give you their own router and now you have a different router. So what you need to check is how to open ports on your router. And then you have an option. I can show you now my node, there we go. Okay, what I have set up here is a node that's running in my local home net and uh, this one is connected uh, via 200 ports to the network. So what you need to do on your router at home is to check where are the settings to open up ports and then you need to uh, open a port range between 10,000 and 30,000. I only use 200 ports. I use the port range from uh, 10,000 to 10,200. What you also could do is you could do uh, UPnP if your if your router supports this. That's also something technically. The easiest way that you could do is just Google if you, if it's possible to open ports with your router or if UPnP is possible with your router. If UPnP is possible with your router, that's an even better solution because now uh, this piece of software can open the ports manually or automatically on your router and you don't need to do anything. If it's not possible or you don't want to do this, like I, uh, like I did in this example, um, you need to find where you can open ports, then you go in there, you need to know what's the IP address of this virtual machine or whatever you host this on. Maybe it's on bare metal or maybe it's on a Raspberry Pi. You need to get the IP address of this Raspberry Pi. Uh, normally it's something like 192.168. A dot whatever. And then you need to open the port range. I think 200 ports is more than enough. I never get more than 10 connections at a time. Even those 200 ports are way too much, but you could use the range from 10,000 to 30,000, but it's not necessary. 200 ports is definitely enough. The only thing that you need to make sure is that you use the UDP protocol and not the TCP protocol. That's all you need to do. And afterwards, you're good to go and your node should something like should look like something like this as mine as you can see i have different services running i have the public service running i have the b2b vpn and data transfer service running and i also have the b2b data scrapping service running those are different services basically the public service means that your node accepting connections from everybody in the mysterium network so it doesn't matter who this is if you don't want to use this and you maybe say to yourself, okay, I don't want to open my IP address to everybody, but what about businesses? B2B VPN data transfer is basically this. 
that only authorized people or authorized companies by Mysterium can connect to your node and can use your IP address. Um, you will earn a little bit less compared to a public, but you also will earn something. So um, I would say that's, that's totally fine. Okay, so now to the last part of this video. In the beginning, I was talking about things that I was restricting or uh, risks that I was talking about. I also mentioned that there is the risk of people doing shady things on the internet over your IP address. This is one thing. But another thing I want to mention in this video is the fact that if people connect to your node and they watch Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever, this can mix up your own Netflix account. I experienced this myself. I was watching a nice movie. And after a while, people were connecting to my IP address and I was not able to watch this movie again or even continue this movie. While I was streaming, my connection was interrupted and it was telling me, hey, something is not wrong with your account. Yeah, something's not all right with your account and we don't want you to watch this video. So what I did is I set up an ad guard service. This is basically a ad blocker. It's blocking all the ad in the, in the network uh, that you're trying to receive maybe you're on a website over financial things or over your news puppy videos whatever and you're seeing all the ads on the left on the right side this piece of software is blocking all of this i don't want to explain to you how you can set this up what what i did is uh, specifically for my mysterium uh my mysterium node i blocked disney plus i blocked netflix and if people connect to my node they cannot watch Disney Plus or Netflix. I could even block you. I could even block more on this, but I'm not doing so. Yeah, just just that you know, this is something you can do as well. If you find out that you have issues, if you run your node on your home lab, and uh, or in your home network, and you have issues with Netflix or Disney Plus, it was happening to me, and that's the reason why I did this. So I think that's it for today's video. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And as always, stay tuned for the next video.